Hey guys, welcome to another session of Epic 7. So what I'm gonna do is that, you know, I still do Guild War and now because of like the weekly or daily RTA stuff that you have to do to get that like, 60 energy. Uh, I'm gonna be posting some videos, like when I have the time, I'll just be posting some of the hits. Uh, both Guild War and RTA. So in this video, I'm just gonna include them both because it's just, you know, PvP things I do daily. Um, so no themes, uh, unfortunately, right now. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do this. I just I have like this footage, and I'm like I'm gonna post it. Uh, maybe my commentary will be good in terms of like maybe maybe you'll learn something. So you know whatever. So this is it. Uh, so yeah. So first team here, uh, very unconventional team. It won't you won't be seeing this like in the meta. It's not a meta defense at the moment. Um, pretty experimental. Uberius Tooth on Hua Yang is. Yeah, an absolute monster. Hua Yang is a mistake on so many different levels, I can't even explain it, but the very fact that she can actually make Uberius Tooth like meta in terms of like it's her best in slot, um, it's pretty incredible because Uberius Tooth hasn't really gotten much love in terms of any warrior artifact, but uh, but she really really makes it work. That S1 becomes like an insane powerhouse. So as you saw there, I did hold the uh, Hua Yang S1 or S3, uh, killed the Selene off with just Uberius Tooth proc because of the pop, and then uh, used the S3 while I still had attack buff from Piera, and then killed the Bellion. Uh, this FCC turned out to be tankier than I wanted. Uh, 28,000 is probably like 1600, 1700 defense, but it's okay. Like at this point, there was no threat. And second team, so ML Celine, honestly, you know, if she's not really effective in World Arena, she is very, very good in Guild War, uh, controllable fights. Um, the reason why I went with the ML Celine here is that that Rylet could have been like 250 speed, 260 speed. Um, in fact, in a later Guild War, not in this video, but in a later Guild War, I did run into that. Actually, it beat my Amelia. Um, that's how fast it was. My Amelia is 262. Um, so, like, the. Selene is really a really good like insurance for like dark teams, especially against C Lilius. So we had to kill the um We had to kill the uh C Lilius there instead of trying to go for the A Ravi. Um just because uh for uh uh Opsi, that is just because we don't know what type of build that A Ravi was. Um so you don't want to lock yourself into that. I mean, if you have the info um, from your other guildmates and you can kill it, I mean, why not go for a Ravi? But the issue is like, if you don't want to lose your op sig, you want to kill off that C Lilia so your op sig doesn't die by her dual attack. So killing, killing the, uh, killing the Emma Lilius, the only risk would have been like op sig getting countered, like from a Ravi. But outside of that, um, we got the two darks handled by ML Selene alone. And the more injury is affected on ML Selene, the harder it is she is to kill. Um, more injury affected, yeah, the harder it is she is to kill. And she life steals back in terms of percent higher than uh, her base uh, her base HP or what she was at. Um, this one, the top team is not a, again, it's the same bottom team, so I use the same tech, but the top team is honestly very unconventional. I hardly see this type of team anymore, FCC especially. No, never mind, FCC I still see a lot, but this, this combo, yeah, this combo was just like, uh, you know, go, go Def Pen, and, uh, we have Watcher Shiri with Sasha, and Watcher Shiri is also very very good again um, with the uh, skill null, very very like very good insurance again, very good protection. I use Watcher Shiri a lot now with very low risk. And then this one was also a slower Rylet, but again this team was, this team would work for like a 250-260 speed Rylet, uh, it would work for uh, anything else and this one you obviously the kill condition now is bellion um, because you don't want to get bellion proccing at obris two times and your selene can literally die to uh, bellion's extra attack especially if the bellion wasn't made with 100 percent crit that's even worse oh yeah for rylet fights uh against the uh against this team my 
Opsig is on the Misha artifact, so the missile artifact. The one that gives you some hit chance. Just to lower the RNG. Of course, it's still 50-50, but it turns out I, I did hit him, so that's good. The lifesteal is actually really low. But, but, oh yeah, never mind. It's because he hit Emma Celine, that's why. <laughs> uh, because uh, it's, it's based on how much damage is dealt, so he can't really do that much damage. Even though he has Vigor, he has the attack buff. Uh, it was pretty safe with Emma Celine. See, I think there's a couple more Guild War fights, and then... Yeah, I think maybe this last one actually. I think it, it's mo it's mainly RTA for this video. You can see a bit of Raz running. So this one was experimenting with Alina's new uh, EE. The one that cleanses. This is, was a very experimental one. I just wanted to see if it worked. It was still a bit scary here as you can see because the the Ciceri actually had to turn but because of Dilibet um, we got the CR boost for the Alina as well and because Piera had the uh, escort buff we had a good opportunity to basically survive that RB or rather not kill the RB on that turn So I go for the Siri here because I would have protect myself here uh, against the RB, the first cleave. But again, I've never really run Alina in a Guild War, and this team is like really odd as well. But because Dilibet is like generally pretty bulky, um, I wasn't too scared of this. Like even if it was Gab, it wouldn't kill on Dilibet. That is. So Lina's pretty good, like I would say like with the EE now, with the buff that she had, um she's I mean, she's she's for sure usable. I just don't usually like using her. There you go, once Arby's dead, the threat is gone. So we're all good. And then the thing is with Pyrrha, like if she did out cycle, every time she does the AoE, Alina heals, so it, it would have been uh, like very very safe. If the debuffs didn't land, not all of them landed, then Dilibet doesn't get the push, and I may have lost that one. Or doesn't push far enough, I may have lost that one. This team I do run into a lot. Um, this one I would say is sort of meta. And a lot of people are building the uh, Fire Mercedes with counter set now. So counter set like full damage. And I think it's really to counter this, this type of team, or to discourage it. Um, I I do believe this was actually on a counter set. It just didn't proc. So I've had, I've had stories. I, it hasn't happened to me, but I can I can imagine it. I've had stories where people did this, like pretty much the same team, and she countered on Op Six S three, and uh, and counter and then magic for friends. So it's like instant wipe. Uh, at least if your Milim isn't like a pure DPS. Or if she is a pure DPS, she's wiped. Okay, this was this was a really funny one. Uh, the Archdemon Shadow is like a really good one here. Um, the Lancey on defense is very very like very very special, and I think it's probably due to the player's name called Solo by Lolly. Um, I think it's more of like a meme. Like that's his like that's his like favorite hero or something. But the seal on the RB there was really really good. Uh because now now he's just like he's instantly dead. There's no no revive. So very very low risk. Cause we have the Aureus, we have the crit reduction from uh, ADS's passive. So there was like it's very very low risk, I suppose. Like even if RB did get a turn, it would have been low risk. My crowd may have been in a better position to horse on this turn. He's at 31,000 HP because I'm running uh the ADS on the imprint release, which is uh, I think it's like was it 12, 12.8% HP I think, uh, top and bottom. So both my Amelia and Crow is getting a benefit of that buff. 
my crowd is 31,000 HP. It's not super fast. It's like 100, 170, 180 speed. Um, mainly built for like, you know, fighting Rimuru, non-RTA. So Rimuru in Arena, Rimuru in uh, Guild War. Um, because like, this pretty much ensures that he won't die. Um, it doesn't matter how many buffs that he has. Like generally, if it's like a fresh hit, uh, Rimuru can't one-shot him with the S3. Not at 30, not at 30,000 HP. So we see the seal the Alencia and then she can't get that passive proccing. Well, I forgot what it's called. I forgot what that mind's eye. That's the Let's name. Go. To Warhorn Alencia too. So killing the uh, killing the uh, sea lilies here um, because again uh, Alencia can't kill my crow. Uh, not with uh, constant healing from the. Honestly, it doesn't matter who I killed. There, there was no, there was no way to die at this point. But this was a relatively slow team. If Amelia wasn't there, this would be a very, very slow, slow team. This one's fun. But I'm really liking using Pyrrha. Um, I think, I think in this, I think in this video, my Pyrrha has been uh, adjusted to, to uh, 300, 311 speed, and with really good bulk. So I didn't kill the Pyrrha. That was good. Um, and it was on a stealth already too, so I, I got very unlucky that she hit the Pyrrha because realistically what I wanted to do was kill the um... So you can see here, I was like, oh crap, uh, what do I do now? He hit he hit my fire, um, but Celine had to be the kill here because she had the revive threat. And this wouldn't matter too much, like pending that my Hua Yang would not like die. From the Selene. So this was a sort of risky. But I can cleanse that, uh, save the cleanse, cleanse the attack down so that my barrier is thicker for this next turn. It was a Durandal, uh, Durandal one, which is interesting as well. Um, I mean, sometimes Warhorn doesn't work now against Piera because of the restrict. So I don't I don't really have a thought on that. Maybe maybe uh, Warhorn would have been stronger anyway though, because like it would have buffed the uh, Celine. Right. So we do a bit of uh, RTA. So I have some footage here. This was. Um, uh, so we're currently, as I'm making this recording, we're currently in resolution season, so season 7. This was the preseason, uh, and so uh, I think, yeah, you see there, I'm gold and I'm facing an emperor. And honestly, because it's preseason, a lot of people like push really far. Uh, right now, I'm playing the actual season, so I just finished my placements and stuff. And like, I'm facing more of like gold, maybe challengers and stuff, but uh while i was doing the preseason um just playing around um we got a lot of a uh, lot more emperor and champion kind of matchups so i mean i constantly talk about this um in my videos that like you know there's there's a meta there's there's some choices and we have a lot of heroes right now in the game um, but you're gonna see like a couple, right? You're gonna see the Sea Lilius, or if, if they're not picked, it's pre banned. Um, but if it's not pre banned, it's going to be picked on one side or the other. You got the A Ravi, you got the Rimru, Pira, and then Hua Yang, and then whatever is to supplement those characters, right? Um, we got the Dilibet coming out, the Emma Kaurik is still like really cancerous. Um, uh, so yeah, a couple, couple of the meta heroes, and there's nothing really special going on here. Um, in my fights that is i'm not trying to do anything too special uh but like you know it's it's not a meta that you want to be like okay let's just draft the fcc first pick you know let's just draft the ruel first pick everything has to kind of be responsive i believe to the top dps which is like rimru aravi hua yang or first picking c lilius piera that kind of hero and then everything else kind of fits that's my observation at least so if you're uh if you're watching this and you're an experienced rta player i might be just talking out of my my butt the f10 e pick was uh, really interesting as well i mean my f10 e is actually ungeared like i don't even have six pieces of gear on her i think i have like four 
um, I just don't feel that she's useful anymore. And so, therefore, I wasn't too afraid of her. Like, out of the threats posed there, it was either, like, to me, like, Dilobet or Rimuru. Yeah, I think I chose to ban the Dilobet, actually. Yeah, because, yeah. So, I mean, that may, okay, so we're fighting preseason Emp, right? So, not necessarily sure, you know, whether or not this player was, like, Emperor last season. There's a lot of mystery right now, but in my opinion, the way it's been going in terms of last season, or even two seasons ago, it's like, it's not enough just to know where the, the player is standing at that moment. Um, in terms of like knowing the gear, knowing their their amount of play. Um, if you're an Emperor, you might be winning a lot, but you also might be playing a ton of games. But this season is going to be a bit different though, so... Because uh, they kind of re readjusted the, the point system. So you can't just spam games in order to get higher. You ha Well, you can, but you're not going to make a huge, huge impact. So, I mean, kill off that, it makes sense, but he can't cleanse the bombs anyway, so it was like, whatever. Um, in terms of this, like, we got two plant, uh, two bombs planted, which is really good. The Rimuru is the biggest threat here, um, because if if he kills, like, he could he could pop my Rem, he could pop my Hua Yang. Um, but at least Rem could kind of, like, tank a Ravi, can kind of tank Politis. Well, maybe not a Ravi specifically. Um, but again, we had the two bombs, so that uh, Rimuru was the kill there. Yeah, my Rem is 22,000 HP. Uh, some of you guys have seen that before on Guild War. I remember uh, one of my <laughs> one of my patrons was like, "That's disgusting." Not in terms of like he was proud of me. He was just like, "That's disgusting," as in like he just thinks I'm super annoying. But it was funny. It was funny. So here I have unbuffable, um, there's no point into like buffing it, so I went for the stun, I didn't get the stun, but then I got lucky with the RNL, so RNL clutch right there, um, and then this way I'm safe again, so you get the, you get the, um, uh, what is it called, escort buff, you got the protection, and so hopefully, you know, fingers crossed that you're surviving that A Robbie, right? So he went for that on purpose there because he wanted to, like, soften my rem uh, my rem has 22,000 hp and i think it was like 1700 defense or 1600 something like that so with the with the uh, escort buff 30 percent damage share um it was pretty hard to for that a robbie to kill even though he did get full stack uh this one's looking looking like a yeah a champ player See, like first pick Rimuru, ban C Lilius. Hua Yang has been kind of my go to first pick, but if I get C Lilius, I would choose C Lilius first. But if they ban C Lilius, I always take the Piera at the moment. The Passar pick was really interesting as well. So I'm like, okay, is he pre thinking that he's just going to ban my Hua Yang? But it's okay, like, you know, that's that's the thing about World Arena drafting. It's like you can't you can't just predict which ones you're gonna ban right away. So in my mind, there's a couple things. Um I don't know if I show it in this video. So in this compilation of fights, I don't think I show it. Um but I have been like when I get the first and second pick, I have been weary on because they are three in, right? So they have only two options left. I always like keep my mind kind of open in terms of do I want to hunker down in terms of go more bulk like protection, either draft a Ruel in between there or get a get a knight in there with Aureus. The thing is though, like like Piera and C Lilius both do some sort of function of damage mitigation. The Vigor buff being the defense buff, and then you got the Escort buff to share. So, Piera honestly functions like a knight, but without having to draft a knight. So, it's pretty it's pretty gross. So, right there, we have two options that he has that he can, like, you know, keep my Hua Yang in the fight. So, now I'm kind of, I was kind of confused. Um, but they're all kind of squishier. So, I'm like, okay. Um... 
like the Amelia pick uh, at this point is a preseason, so this is 20 speed more on the Amelia, right? So I mentioned in the Guild War section that she was 262, so realistically she's 282 at the moment on the screen. So they banned the Pira because he's like, okay, I'm gonna be faster, and he was. So I'm full resist there because my uh, solitary is actually built for resistance, not effectiveness. But he didn't use the souls, I guess he wanted the Pissar. It didn't matter because I did lose her. So getting attack buff on Hua Yang is just for a thicker barrier on the next turn. My Hua Yang is uh, 1600 defense, and then with the 30% damage mitigation and a pretty thick barrier, Arby's can't, shouldn't be able to kill it with a Gab, not an S3. But two attacks and yeah, she'd probably be dead. No immunity on them, so they lost all their skills. The Delibet that reset that is. So Europe, uh, Europe, um, Emperor. Against us on preseason. I'll deal with this. Should I warm up? Rimuru pre ban a Robbie, and I'm like, okay. So sometimes I feel like, like Sea Lilis is definitely stronger than Pyrrha still. But it does depend on your gear. Um, at the end of the day, it's easier to get a period of faster speed. So he's already he's already opting for a speed imprint here. So I'm like, okay, okay, got to make sure that you know I am not trapping myself because this could go any way. So RB is pretty safe. I haven't used K-Ron in a long time. I think I think there are instances where K-Ron could be used. Again. I might have to revisit it. Um, but I'm using kind of BBK right now for the kind of K-Ron kind of position. But double picking them could be useful useful too. So the RAM pick here, I will admit that is very, very strange. At the most, I can get a defense break. Um, the thing with like someone like RAN um, is that like you can go to the non-attack skill and don't force debuffs, or you can go debuff route and don't do the non-attack skill. Like you can, you don't have to do the t the cycle where it's S two S three. That's what makes Pira and RAN both really annoying too. My Ran outsped my Pira, even though my Pira had more speed. It was RNG. Killing the Ran there was actually very lucky because I think I would lose uh, if if he killed the. Uh, and and this sit is not like this sit is not geared. Um, it's too slow. Um, people who run green sids gotta have 300 speed sids. Otherwise, it's just it's just not not really great. My uh, RB is 251 speed as a reference to that SID speed, so the SID was really slow. It was literally for a speed imprint at that point. This was really good as well. Um, the the escort buff really helped me survive, even though that was a dual attack on the opponent's end. 
But yeah, so once once we have uh, Hua Yang killing off the A Robbie, the game was over. So again, disgusting heroes. Yeah, I'm pre-banning AOL right now because I don't have AOL. Um, but I'm facing a lot of players who pre-ban a lot of stuff. So it's going to be interesting um, when I get to Resolution Seasons Champion. The double pre-ban. You know, I don't know who I want to take out because I do have everything at the moment. And AOL will probably still be one of the ones I, I want to remove because I do rely on AOE quite a bit. Or I want the option to. So at this one, I'm picking C. Lilius first. So you can see I don't have a, um, at the moment I don't have really like my favorite first pick. Um, but obviously being being able to kind of respond to the picks are, is really important. So here he's drafting as FCC here telling me that he doesn't want to go super aggro because he only has two slots left. So he's gonna, he's gonna hunker down. I, I do think that this Soul Weaver Frenzy, again, this is preseason you're watching, so it's 20 speed extra and then 15 speed on the real season is pretty good in terms of like, it is definitely making people use Soul Weavers more, but at the same time, it just feels very artificial. Like, I, I, that's just to me, that's just me. Then I could feel like they could do that with any Frenzy on any class, you know, like they can do speed or they can add more damage or they can add damage mitigation, which they kind of did, right, for the uh, elemental damage mitigation now. If you had a disadvantage, you're going to do 30% less damage. It's significant. It's significant. So this is pretty fun as well. I mean, the LQC drafted here is not so great. Like if he has ML Cowrick or something like that, like I still might get screwed. Um... But uh, because if he bans the Amelia, my LQC has no reach. Um, so this was like kind of like a misdraft on my part, in my opinion. But uh, I think I think drafting it still like like made the player hesitant. But I think I made a mistake. So if I was facing like a, a regular regular RT player, I think that I that was a bad draft. So Rimuru with with uh, Lilius is really good as well, since you get like immediate four buffs. So like he's he's pretty much ready to go uh, with the S three on turn one, uh, assuming he keeps the Lilius in. It's time to find an answer. Now this was just funny. Um, I okay, so I think I think there's an aspect to double fire here, um, making me think that I'll oh yeah, don't worry, I'm I'm gonna ban one of the fires because I have a green. So the Rimuru does not miss um, fire, so it's uh, it's pretty it's unfair to be honest. <laughs> so I was thinking about what he's gonna ban here, um, but uh, like if you keep the Milliman and then Rimuru can steal the evasion and stuff. So like Rimuru is still like really disgusting. So he had to he kind of felt like he had to ban the Rim because based on my bulk. It is really hard for those fire heroes to kill the Rem, um, especially if she has demon mode. So that was the right ban on his part, but I think the double fire he drafted was not uh, was not the right call. So again, keep in mind the the speed buff on the Amelia there. That's why she's so fast, like right behind my C Lilius. My C Lilius is 300 speed at the moment. And my Rimuru has the turn before any of them, which is really, really fortunate. He's just above 200 speed. So now with Vigor and attack buff and Hellcutter stacked up four, like I was pretty confident to kill the A Robbie, even if she had proof of valor. But I think, you know, if she, if I did a damage calculation, it may have not been enough to be honest. It just did 30,000 through the barrier, through Aureus, but if proof of valor was there, I maybe she doesn't die. So when we hit the, uh, like I, I wasn't, I wasn't hundred percent sure if I could have killed the carrot. I guess I could have. Um, she does have damage mitigation if I remember correctly. Uh, I don't know if it's crit related, but it, it may have survived the Rimuru. But mainly because I, I wanted to keep the attack down on her. So if I touched her, she would have cleansed that attack down. 
Um, so it just kept their burns very low damage. So that's why I went for the Millum. And the Millum can be very uncontrollable. If you if you allow her a couple turns, she can be pretty scary. I'll take your life. Not sure why he didn't yield, but it's okay, it didn't matter. It was pretty tanky, actually. Only did 10,000 on the S1 with an attack buff. That's pretty tanky. You know, the Hua Yang pre ban, and definitely, you know, A Robbie pre ban, Hua Yang. There's like a ton of pre bannable options. All of them are pretty cancer. When was C Lily's first pick on this one? Ah uh, yeah, ML Cowric is one I'm missing. So I am I am hoping for the uh that Mystic banner coming. I am hoping to get him. Um I think he's the only one that is an ML5 that it would be beneficial for me now. Now with the SBA buffed and like I mean I don't have SBA DJB spez. I think those are the three I'm missing and ML Cowric. But ML Cowric is very, very effective still, so I think I think he's the only one I'm missing that I really would need. Uh, Silver Blade Araminta, we'll have to see if uh, after the buff she'll be she'll be pretty good. Um, I think she will have really good chemistry with a couple of the openers at the moment. Uh, but uh, we'll we'll have to see. I think there's potential for uh, SBA. During the season that Rimru was available, I didn't use him a lot because I didn't have the gear for him. I didn't really know how to use him well, especially the team comps that he goes in. So I wasn't really comfortable. But uh, yeah, now now that I've uh, you know we we've had Rimru now for what two three two seasons, end of one of the seasons, and now uh, onto the third season. Um, so I mean he's 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 tried and tested. Uh, of course, very effective. The uh, non awakening and the level 50s here was kind of like okay, never mind. I don't think, you know, I didn't think uh, this this fight was gonna be super fair. So assuming out gearing, um, that is something that I you know I can't cannot rely on for sure. Uh, up, especially up to uh, uh, champion and emperor. The Archie Shadow was an odd ish one, but not totally either. So I was just thinking like maybe I could draft around the Archdemon Shadow and then still win. So that's what I was thinking at the moment. Because if she if she steals a Ravi, she steals Rimuru, there's gonna be a lot of issues. So again, I'm kinda drafting with uh with killing the Spectani in mind at the moment. So I'm trying to keep Spectani in. Um I need basically double double AoE. Uh, my BBK is high ER build. It's usually for anti cleave, so in this kind of draft, is not super effective. I'll make sure you are welcomed. So you can see, like everything I need is all e based on the. Like I think I think if I was fighting someone with the proper gear, I I don't think my draft is good, um, because he had Piera and I'm not drafting to band a Piera. But yeah, ADS was my my target here. I think he I think he bans the BBK. I'm 
Oh no, he banned the A Ravi. Okay, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so so here is like literally just putting myself out there. Is my C Lily faster? That's that's really. That was really it, but it turned out it wasn't faster. So close, but it's like it's kind of obvious that I shouldn't have beat it. It did miss the Rimru, and that is very very good. So if I got a restrict there, it would have been really bad. I think I think my Rimru just gets really lucky um, with the resistance. So I mean, immunity, immunity, guys, is very very good, you know. My limit. So the attack down cancels out the attack buff. Yeah, so I resisted it. Yeah, so the immunity is super super important. And I actually didn't kill my RB. I'm surprised. Yeah, I think this is a gear gap for sure. How pathetic. It's all in there. But Rimru immunity, always immunity if you can. So so important in my opinion. <laughs> See this ban Hua Yang. My choice here. Yeah, so yeah, I'll I'll see what I'll do. Like I think Guild War. I mean, I consistently do it. Um, I'll include like Guild War RTA fights here and there. Uh, I don't know how often I'll be uploading them, but just in case if you're bored and you're just like watching stuff, hopefully this is something. Yeah, Rimru pick into Hua Yang. Very solid. The Bellion pick was odd. I suppose they were afraid I would do some cleaving or something. I'm not quite sure. Or just to uh, preempt me from not getting Spectany, I guess. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm at a I'm at a loss of what I want to do with Bellion. I think I think I might go back to Injury again for World Arena because. Like the way I see her is like I probably I probably need a couple injury heroes for people who still play very very bulky and no like no aggro. So I I'm considering putting my building back onto injury. <clears throat> I don't use her in guild or defense anymore or arena. So Ruel, so he's playing very slow. With the belly set and then a Ruel. And a Crow. So I I was like, okay, I think I think like I I don't see Crow a lot anymore. I think they're not really caught up with the meta yet. Just know that Rimru is disgusting, so first pick. Um I think I do settle with Solitaria here. Cause right now I'm thinking like what would be the last pick here that would just, you know, screw me up and I don't think there were like many. Fast so right now right now I'm I'm banning either last pick or first pick. Uh, the Singelica would be at uh, 270 speed uh, with the uh, Frenzy change. I will claim my throne. I 
So here, I don't think I banned the Rimuru. I think I do ban the Emma Kowazu because I'm thinking that, you know, my Huayang is probably quicker than the Rimuru, so I could kill that Rimuru first anyway. I think I do, I do settle with Emma Kowazu, yeah. So we got the attack buff from Piera anyway. Yeah, so my Huayang was just quicker than, uh, who is this first? Looks like Kral. So I kind of, I kind of was looking for the Bellion uh, AOE there. So my A Ravi would be pushed up in terms of CR. It's just easier to clean up a couple like heroes if I had the A Ravi go up. So this was pretty good already because he had he would have no buff for the Rimuru. I think a play that he could have done, to be honest, is uh, because he does revive the Rimuru. It is I think it is the right right call. Oh yeah, I think I got really lucky here. That dual attack and it was a counter one. <laughs> yeah, that was super lucky. So, I mean, he could have did the S3 and then, like... Well, I guess he, she did counter on the a, a Ravi. Um, so he would have lost the invincibility. So there was a lot of RNG there, but I don't think that Ruo had the pace. So this is some of the uh, preseason placement. I just realized the quality from my phone recording is actually not that good. It's like kind of choppy, missing frames a couple like a couple times. Not satisfied with it. I, I might have to play on the emulator. Are you my next target? As long as I'm holding this See Lily's pre-ban. FCC first pick, that was surprising for me. But the Amelia follow-up is pretty decent. That means I had limited options. Like I could go with Piera for like protection and stuff like that, but like Emilia would cleanse out of it and push. So I had to be really careful, uh, especially now that I've committed to Piera. It's like this third pick has to be very neutral because he hasn't really shown his cards yet. He hasn't chosen his DPS. So one of the safest ways, of course, if you see a buffer with an attack buff, you know, Rimru, not bad. The Ran pick was interesting because, like, now he has, realistically, he has one more slot for a DPS. So if you don't consider Ran a DPS, uh, the, uh, the Dilibet isn't too hard to deal with. So now it's all about going more bulk. So go double green and then Ran is kind of useless there. Uh, and then I could just ban the last pick. And the Dilibet wouldn't be too much of a threat versus Hua Young. So I think I think I choose A Robby. That would be my go-to for this one. Because he hasn't chosen A Robby yet, which I'm surprised. I'll take your life. Yeah, so once I have the A-Rob, he has really no damage, so I could just ban the last pick. I have actually had a fight where I lost to a Dilibet, who reset my Violet, so he lost his evasion. I was really confused what happened, because I, I wasn't countering when I was evading. 
Um, and I was like, oh frick, the Dilibet actually hit and then reset him. Um, which is also another reason why my Vile is on immunity now instead of pen set. It was to counter Ceseria Cleave, but, uh, but Dilibet also screws him up. RNL ran. So, I mean, that was pretty good damage. And one shot, of course, with the death break. So again, like, really, this this fight is like you got two you have two characters um, that can deal damage. You got Ran and Dilibet, and then it's just like who can kill each uh, who can kill who first. A Ravi with the uh, oh I forgot what that debuff is called, but it lowers the healing amount as well. But yeah, once Ran's dead, it's like it's pretty much over, because like Dilibet cannot. It'd be very difficult for Dilibet to kill a Ravi and a Violet without giving a Ravi a shot at the uh, S3 because she's injuring as well. So like in terms of uh, FCC protecting against a Ravi, not super effective long term, just because of the injury that she can inflict on FCC and then therefore no protection after. And then if if uh, Dilibet wanted to risk the S3 and uh, it potentially missed my Violet, then my Violet gets a attack buff and gets a turn, etc. So it was very risky. He wanted to keep me provoked, keep me locked down so I don't, uh, I can't revive, but it didn't matter. Every single provoke would only make the FCC weaker. Just applying pressure onto the it didn't really matter. To take, to break, and to destroy. That is a I'll deal with this. Interrupt my work. Look at my sword, not my face. Yeah, I think he was like doing a bit low damage on the A Robbie there, so I was kind of surprised he didn't just quit. But I guess he he would have thought that maybe he kept on provoking and stunning or uh, what do you call it, silencing me and then resetting me, that I would never get the S three off, which could work I guess, um, but that would depend on the frenzy as well. Because at any point, a Robbie's uh, attack is also going higher as the Frenzy is going high. So yeah, I think he was trying to just reset the Violet. He really wanted this win. Yeah, and I think after this is the last fight, at least in this video, I'll have more footage after. It's kind of like, I just had too much. So this was a long one. But I mean, if you have been watching this up to this point, um, well, I'm going to test you. Um, I'm picking my nose. I'm picking my nose. All right. <laughs> Most likely you're not hearing this anyway. But uh, if you have watched all of it, yeah, thanks for watching. I think I did so bad in the preseason that my MMR was just like it's not the same. So during preseason, I was fighting a lot of Emps and Champ, but I, it, may, it might just be because the season's fresh as well. A lot of players are playing, especially with the uh, uh, E7WC coming. Um, a lot of players are playing, and the, the frame looks good, so we got a lot of uh, incentive to play. 
I'm, I'm fighting at the in terms of the placements i'm fighting a lot lower level players for sure like i've already finished my placements i ended up in gold but like i'm fighting a lot lower uh lower end players i think um so it's gonna be an interesting season gotta keep farming for those gear i hear the footsteps of destruction yeah, Hua, Wong, Hua Yang was the kill there, or the the the, the removal. Um, everything else was not too bad because like if if Celine killed my RB, uh, RB gets revived and every full team wipe. But uh, I was faster on both ends. It was a Warhorn Delibet actually. I just realized that was a lucky dual attack. But if I didn't get the dual attack, my play would have been different anyway. Like, I would have pushed the Dilibet back. I think she still gets the turn though, with the push. It's literally just cancels each other out. But again, the issue is that he had to kill RB, right? And I had bulk, and I had like, some CC. So it was, uh, it was pretty hard. Um, I don't know why my RB keeps surviving. <laughs> he shouldn't be surviving, he's, he's very squishy. Anyway, so that's it for this one. You know, let me know if you guys like this. Um, you know, if you guys like watching this or you find it casual, I'll, you know, I'll obviously upload more. Um, otherwise, uh, thanks for watching. I'll end this here. See you guys. If you want to see more content from me, I started a new YouTube channel dedicated to uploading my stream VODs called Casual Face Roll. Currently doing an in-depth playthrough of Elden Ring with over 30 hours of content so far. Oh, what the frick? You piece of stupid ball! Okay, you can't let him have momentum. Oh, shoot! I can kill my own ball?! Uh, a couple slimes. Although they are protecting treasure. Oh my goodness, there's way too many! Is this what? What?! How? Arcade. Was this. It's that ball! The ball is there! He's coming! So if you want to see more, consider subscribing. Thanks.